Sweden wants to take Russia out and is doing everything it can to help Ukraine to do so. Sweden's strategy is to pour everything into defeating Russia now so that it'll not have to fight a war later that impacts its territories. As NATO's newest member, Sweden has stepped in to help Ukraine and shift the tides of the war against Russia, dramatically. On May 29th, Sweden announced that it was giving Ukraine its 16th aid package, which would include more equipment and financial aid. Notably, this military aid package included an early warning aircraft, missiles, and air defense systems, which are important in fighting off Russia's airstrikes. In this video, we're going to talk about Sweden's support for Ukraine, the impact it'll have on Russia, and the relations between the two powers. In the fast-paced world of geopolitics, we're doing everything we can to push out informative content. Sometimes this is difficult to do because Putin's bots and the algorithm, but you can help us out by liking our videos and sharing them too. All right, let's get into the video. Russia's aggression has called down countries like Sweden from the terrace and into the war to fight on Ukraine's side. Sweden's foreign policy has always been one of neutrality, but Putin's aggression has forced their hand. This military package from Sweden comes with an airborne surveillance and control aircraft, an ASC-890, which will strengthen Ukraine's air defense capability drastically. Up until now, Russia has had a monopoly on the skies, but this move by Sweden changed that balance. Ukraine has received air defense system donations from allies like Australia, and these systems work well with this Swedish donation. The beauty of this air warning aircraft is that it is compatible with the F-16 fighter jets that Ukraine will also receive this year. Sweden has also donated its entire stock of armored personnel carriers to help rebuild Ukrainian brigades after the damage they have taken. Other donations included artillery, ammunition, and resources for maintaining the material it had already received from previous donations. Sweden's defense minister, Paul Johnson, commented on the donation, saying, Sweden will donate a new military capability to strengthen Ukraine's air defense. Package 16 will be the largest military aid package yet at 1.16 billion euro. Sweden will donate airborne surveillance and control aircraft ASC-890 to Ukraine. On top of this, Sweden is also looking to donate a number of advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles, or AMRAMs, which Ukraine will use in its ground-based air defense systems. The Swedish Defense Research Agency is also stepping up to help Ukraine so that it can establish a defense research institute of its own. This commitment to helping Ukraine goes beyond just sending aid. Sweden wants to make sure that, in the long run, Ukraine has systems in place to help it protect its own sovereignty. Ukraine's command and control capability is also getting a facelift because Sweden is donating terminals with satellite communication subscriptions. According to the ministry, the donation will entail a temporary decrease in Sweden's defense capability, which will be addressed by procuring additional S-106 Global Eye aircraft and advancing previous orders for two new Global Eye aircraft. Sweden will also purchase new armored vehicles and missiles to replace the donated ones. In addition to all of this, the military support package also has surplus fuel transport vehicles courtesy of the Swedish Armed Forces. They will also receive financial support for funds and initiatives that go into procuring military material for Ukraine. Stockholm has sweetened the deal further and made an important contribution by adding additional 6-inch artillery shells. There were well over 2 million rounds donated, and this massive amount of ammunition will last Ukraine all the way until 2025. But hopefully the war is not going to get that far. What we need to know is that Sweden has been standing behind Ukraine since the beginning of the Russian invasion. And to date, they have donated 43.5 billion krone, which is about 5 billion US dollars. Coupled with this earth-shaking donation is something else that is going to cause a lot of trouble for Russia. Unlike more reserved allies, Sweden has boldly given Ukraine the right to use its weapons on Russian soil. The May military package is not the only military aid that Ukraine has received so far. In late February, Sweden also announced a $682 million aid package. The highlight of this particular package was that it was geared towards maritime support, including underwater weapons like mines and subsea drones. Half of the money from this donation also went to purchasing 10 new armored combat vehicles that will be ready for Ukraine in 2026. During a press conference, Defense Minister Johnson made it very clear that Sweden was in this for the long run, stating, We will continue to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Even before its most recent package in May, Sweden stepped in to help Ukraine secure its energy supply after it took some hits from Russian missiles and drones. The aid was spent on energy items like generators, transformers, and solar cells. Right, at this point I'm sure that you're noticing that all of the help that Sweden has given is military at this point. 
The nature of the packages Sweden has been giving Ukraine communicates very clearly that the intention is to take Russia out. Now, with this recent May donation, Sweden may be able to do so. The most decisive damage to Moscow has been this May. But ever since Sweden joined NATO before that, it has been working overtime to help Ukraine. On the 7th of March in 2024, at a ceremony that took place in Washington, D.C., Sweden finally became a NATO member since its application two years prior. NATO's Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg stated that Sweden joining NATO was such an asset because it boasted a first-class defense industry and a top-notch military. As soon as Sweden became a part of NATO, Russia knew that it was in for it. And even Ukraine's President Zelensky commented on the addition, saying that one more country in Europe has become more protected from Russian evil. It is very important to notice that Sweden's application to join NATO coincides with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. From the get-go, Sweden was working towards a way to step up and do more with the international community. The first thing Sweden did was reverse its permission to supply Russia with high-grade military aid. Then, in August of 2022, Sweden donated a military package that was worth $46.8 million. During a press conference about Sweden's support for Ukraine, Sweden's Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson made it clear that it considered Ukraine a close friend and an ally. At the same press conference, Swedish Foreign Minister Ann Lind also made the bold assertion that as long as the war is going on, Sweden would be offering support for Ukraine. This package included weapons like anti-material weapons, air defenses, and light vehicles. A year later, on the first anniversary of the war, Sweden pledged that it would donate 10 Leopard 2A5 tanks to Ukraine. This beast is a German war machine designed by the German company Krauss Maffei Wegmann. The entire tank is decked with a 4.7-inch smoothbore gun, a 0.3-inch coaxial gun, and an anti-aircraft machine gun. Along with the tanks, Sweden also donated some Hawk systems and important parts for the Iris T anti-aircraft system in cooperation with Germany. As it stands, Sweden's total aid to Ukraine is over $4 billion spread across 16 packages. Sweden is also among the few nations that have given Ukraine its weapons timiously and stepped up its commitment each quarter. Zelensky has complained that some of its other allies proposed certain aid but delivered it months later when the need for it vanished. Now, before we get into that, I quickly wanted to answer a question we recently got asked. A lot of you guys want to start a YouTube channel, but you're camera shy or just not comfortable putting your face out there. In fact, this channel is a perfect example, and that's why this channel has no face on it. Luckily, you can still grow a YouTube channel even without showing your face or giving up your privacy. This channel is living proof of that. In fact, here are just a few examples of channels that have started in the last 12 months and grew an audience without showing their face. They have gotten millions of views and made thousands of dollars from them. Now, we recently crossed 1 million subscribers, and along the way, we've learned a few tips and tricks about YouTube that can be helpful to any of you who want to start your own channel. We've included all of this in my completely free 7-day YouTube Crash Course Bootcamp. So, if you're someone who's interested in starting up a YouTube channel, this is the perfect starting point for you. What better way to convince you than to read a comment left by a previous student? This free bootcamp is better than a paid course he took. So, if you're interested in signing up, you can sign up for free now by clicking on the link in the description or by scanning the QR code on the screen. The only thing that Ukraine is waiting on now is Sweden's fighter jet aircraft, the JAS-39 Gripen fighter jet. This jet is so popular because it is light and highly maneuverable and can be used for offensive operations. It can also be equipped with other powerful weapons like Meteor air-to-air -air missiles, Taurus cruise missiles, and guided bombs. Stockholm has said that it is working on the possibility of opening the Gripen system to the world, and Ukraine is very excited about this. While Kyiv waits for permission here, Sweden has also donated its entire fleet of PBV-302 fighting vehicles to Ukraine. This donation is of hand-me-downs, as Sweden has retired this design for fleet for a later model. This vehicle was decommissioned in 2014 and replaced with CV-90 IFVs. Despite this, it is still a high-mobility infantry fighting vehicle armed with a 0.8-inch Hispano Suiza HS-804 automatic cannon, which is mounted on the right side of the vehicle. As a secondary weapon, the 0.3-inch machine gun can also be used by personnel in combat. This donation should not be looked down upon because these machines are of good quality and will help the Ukrainian army. The vehicle weighs in at an impressive 12.3 tons and is armored in a way that can help it withstand 0.8-inch rounds. In terms of design, the driver of the vehicle sits up front 
and it also has room for a gunner, a commander, and five other soldiers in a landing compartment. Ukraine simply has to give them a good dust down, repair them, and modernize them before they go into battle. Perhaps the most generous of all the donations that Sweden has made is one of its two prized Saab ASCC 890 Airborne Early Warning and Control Planes. The amazing aircraft has an Eri Airborne Early Warning and Control System and an active Electronically Scanned Array, or AESA, radar mounted on top of the plane. Its range is beyond 342 miles, about 550 kilometers, which is pretty impressive for an aircraft of its size. To top it off, it will be effectively able to track both airborne and naval targets. The package also comes with training for the Ukrainian Air Force so that they know how to use this machine. According to the Swedish Ministry of Defense, Ukraine's capability to identify and engage targets at long range will be strengthened. The package will also include a holistic solution that involves training, technical equipment, and methodological support for air surveillance and command and control. Now, unlike the PBV 302s, these planes are not hand-me-downs. They are an active part of the Swedish fleet, and now Sweden has given them to help Ukraine's war effort. The level of sacrifice is incredible, and it is very clear that Sweden truly wishes to assist Ukraine in winning this war. There is some wisdom in the way that Sweden is approaching this war. Sweden's strategy is to pour everything into defeating Russia now so that it will not have to fight a war later that impacts its own territories. To be quite frank, that should be the way that most of the international community is thinking. The more aid they offer now, the less likely they will have Putin in their backyards in the next couple of years. Putin's aggression is insatiable, and Ukraine will not be the last invasion if he succeeds. Currently, a lot of allies are choosing to hold off on sending certain artillery, but it will be to their detriment in the long run. Although Sweden is losing a lot in helping Russia, it has already begun to work on rebuilding its own arsenal. To replace the Saab aircraft, Sweden is looking to purchase the S-106 Global Eye aircraft. This aircraft is a cut above the Saab ASCC 890 because it has multi-domain surveillance, which allows it to provide long-range detection and identification across the big three, air, sea, and land. It also has Saab's Eerie Eye Extended Range Radar, which takes it up a notch with advanced active and passive sensors that allow for early threat detection in real time. There are also talks of Sweden's defense spending going up. For 2024, Sweden has increased its defense budget to $2.44 billion, about 27 billion krones. The jump will make defense spending double what it was in 2020. This jump will also place it above the 2% of GDP requirement that NATO has for its members. As Sweden continues to grow its personnel capacity, it will be able to pour into Ukraine more. From the first donation Sweden gave back in 2022 to the most recent one, it is clear that it has always had it out for Russia. The last donation is definitely the last straw, and Russia may not be able to come back from this one. What will happen is that as Sweden and other allies keep pouring aid into Ukraine, Russia will begin to suffer more losses. When that happens, the war will inevitably end. Okay, so let's make it more specific. According to Estonia, Ukraine needs to kill 100,000 soldiers by the end of 2024 to end the war. The logic behind this is that Ukraine needs to be taking out Russian soldiers faster than they're able to replenish their supply. According to the Estonian Defense Ministry, if Kyiv wants to come out on top, it needs to take out more soldiers and reduce the speed at which Russia can train and deploy its soldiers. While this all sounds inhumane, it is the cost that Russia will have to pay for its aggression. With large donations like the one that Sweden has made, Ukraine will be able to exact this directive and we could be looking at the end of the war soon. To also aid Ukraine in preserving its troops, the Western allies have been offering to train some soldiers in preparation for the coming months. Reports show that more than 100,000 soldiers have been trained externally since the war. All of this is meant to increase Ukraine's chances and help them beat Russia. Russia's response to Sweden joining NATO and the increased support for Ukraine makes it clear that it is intimidated. According to Maria Zakharova, the spokesperson for the Russian Foreign Ministry, the Kremlin is keeping a close watch on Sweden and how it will behave as a NATO member. She claims that Russia will be prepared on the technical and military side to be able to respond to any aggression. In a statement to the media, she said, Sweden's ascension to NATO is accompanied by the ongoing fueling of anti-Russian hysteria in the country, which, unfortunately, is encouraged by the Swedish political and military leadership. But its main source is abroad. It is not the Swedes themselves who are making the choice. This choice has been made for the Swedes. Now we're going to talk about why Sweden is riding so hard for Ukraine and looking to take Russia out. 
Like a lot of countries in the world, Sweden has a history with the Kremlin. Their history takes us all the way back to the 18th century during the Great Northern War. Let's set the scene. The point of contention is the Baltic Sea, and both Russia and Sweden had a desire to claim territory in the Baltic Sea and the Black Sea. The war went on for years, but in the Battle of Poltava, Russia finally defeated Sweden, and animosity has existed from then on. Sweden was a bit of a sore loser, and it has been patrolling the area with submarines to protect its coastline. Sweden's suspicion of Russia was so great that it led to the design of the Gripen fighter jet. The Gripen's radar system was designed to allow it to scan around Russian territory from a distance and without flying in its direction. Ever since the war in the Baltic Sea, Sweden has feared Russia. The fear is so deep that the phrase, the Russians are coming, Riesen kommer, has become a common Swedish expression. Currently, the island of Gotland is what stands between Russia and Sweden, and after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there's been a fear that the aggression will move to Sweden. Prior to the Ukrainian invasion, Sweden began to notice that some of Russia's warships would be moving around very close to Sweden's territory. This coupled with unknown drone flights over Sweden's nuclear power plants has put Sweden on high alert. At the beginning of the year, Sweden had to send in tanks because there had been increased military activity in the region. Within 48 hours of sighting the warships, patrol soldiers were all over the island. However, some people believe that Russia's actions were a type of psychological warfare. As Sweden was getting closer to entering NATO, Russia was trying to flex its military muscle. According to Magnus Christensen, a researcher in military strategy at the Swedish Defense University, this was a ploy. In an interview, he said, Of course, they already know where the power plants are. And doesn't just about everyone know where the royal palace is? This is a really cheap way to get someone out of balance. It's psychological. One resident of Gotland Island told a very interesting story about the history with Russia, stating that, When I grew up in the 1950s, our parents used to threaten us with Russia if we didn't behave. If you don't finish your dinner, the Russians will get you. That threat is here again, now in real life. We are, after all, rather vulnerable out here in the Baltic Sea. Now that Sweden is a member of NATO, the tension in the Baltic Sea is through the roof. Putin sees Sweden joining NATO as an act of aggression, and a possible threat to the Baltics. What is scary for Putin is the fact that Finland's Åland Islands and Sweden's Gotland sit in the middle of the Baltic Sea. With both countries being members of NATO, he believes that NATO will use this opportunity to take his control of the Baltic Sea away. Michael Biden, a commander of the Swedish Armed Forces, had this to say on the matter. I'm sure that Putin even has both eyes on Gotland. Putin's goal is to gain control of the Baltic Sea. If Russia takes control and seals off the Baltic Sea, it would have an enormous impact on our lives. In Sweden and all other countries bordering the Baltic Sea. We can't allow that. The Baltic Sea must not become Putin's playground where he terrifies NATO's members. Sweden understands that a Russian takeover would have a negative impact on world war and peace in the Baltics. An understanding of these fears really puts into perspective why Sweden has been as committed to the Ukrainian war effort. Stockholm understands that if they can take Putin out here, they will not have to worry about him later. Stockholm's dedication has been legendary, and the rest of the Allies should be taking notes. From the very beginning, Stockholm has poured into Ukraine's military and is committed to a long-term investment. The recent package that has been delivered will definitely boost Ukraine's artillery and the continuous support clearly communicates that Sweden wants Russia out of Ukraine expeditiously.